Okay. I'm with Mark Adler, the President and CEO of the Economic Club of Canada and the Conservative MP for York Centre. Mark, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Harry. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about the Economic Club of Canada and what it does. Well, the Economic Club of Canada is a business that I started about eight years ago now. And the primary purpose was not to create a platform whereby people could come and just deliver a speech. What I wanted to do was to create a platform where senior policymakers, both from Canada and abroad, could come and make significant policy announcements. And the reason why I wanted to do that was to get the policymakers out of the press galleries, out of the press studios, away from the media events, mm -hmm. and in front of the stakeholders and key people that their policy decisions would affect. So when we do our events, and a, what a new, unique characteristic of what we do at the Economic Club, our events are not planned months ahead of time. Because as you know, policymakers don't come and cabinet ministers don't say, well, I'm going to make a policy announcement six months from now. It's two or three days from now. And so our events are planned on an average of approximately two to three days. Mm -hmm. And they range in size anywhere from 250 people to 2,000 people. And uh, because of that, all of our events are very newsworthy and very topical. If you're giving the same speech, uh, you know, here and th there and everywhere, the Economic Club is not a fit for you. You have to be, like I said, a senior policymaker making a significant policy announcement. Do you have any international chapters for the Economic Club of Canada? Well, it's um, interesting you say that because we started as the Economic Club of Toronto eight years ago. And about four years ago, we started to do events across the country. We changed our name to the Economic Club of Canada. And we do right now between 150 and 200 events across Canada in every city. Last year, we started operations in Hong Kong as the mm -hmm. Economic Club of Hong Kong. And later this year, the organization is opening up in London, England as mm -hmm. the Economic Club of London. Okay. So let me switch gears a little bit on the economy. People today are scared. The U.S. is having a slow growth in their economy, heading to a recession. So how afraid should Canada be? Well, I don't know if afraid is the right word. I think Canada has taken a cautious approach to the economic crisis that uh, the world finds itself in. As you know, we just came through a federal election campaign. Mm -hmm. The government of Canada has implemented the last phase of Canada's economic action plan in the budget that was brought down on June the 6th. Canada is well positioned right now to weather the economic storm. Now, having said that, there's a lot of dangers on the international scene, dangers that are lapping at our shores. In light of that, Canada, however, is well positioned as a member of the G8 to withstand a lot of the economic effects that could happen. It was certainly happening in other countries that could come to our shores. You know, this is not a made in Canada recession. Mm -hmm. This is an international crisis. However, we are well positioned because of the strong economy that we have here in Canada, thanks to Prime Minister Stephen Harper and Finance Minister Jim Flaherty, that we are well positioned and in a good spot to withstand a lot of the international pressures that we're going to be under. 75% of your trade is today exports are into the U.S. So looking at it from that standpoint and looking at generally the loss of jobs in the manufacturing sector, uh, especially the automotive and certain other key sectors, how do you think Canada is going to handle the economy if it's so dependent on the United States? Well, that's um, it's an interesting question. And, you know, we recently saw Prime Minister Harper just came back from Latin America on a, uh, a trip down south. And the Harper government recognizes that we can't put all of our eggs into one basket, into the U.S. basket any longer. Canada has been for far too long, far too dependent on the U.S. economy. Now, there's been you know, obvious reasons for that. We speak the same language. Um, it's an easily accessible market. It's a market of close to 300 million people. So it's sort of that the, the laws of sort of natural you know, selection mm -hmm. dictate that, well, you know, it's easy to sell into the U.S. market. And that's been perfectly fine and served us quite well for, mm -hmm. for a number of decades. 
However, because we, we have a global economy now, and trade is so important to the future of our jobs and to the future of our economic security, mm -hmm. the Harper government had reached out beyond the U.S. market mm -hmm. to Latin America, to Europe, to other, other economies. Um, so since 2006, we've had six trade deals negotiated, or sorry, nine trade deals negotiated with various countries around the world. Uh, the Harper government just announced a free trade deal with Honduras, that's included, mm -hmm. with Colombia. We're entering into a second stage of a free trade agreement with Israel, which will mm -hmm. enhance the, uh, the, uh, the free trade agreement that currently exists between the two countries with the European Union. So trade is the future, and trade will create jobs, and the Harper government recognizes that and is making a concerted effort to, to negotiate free trade deals that will create jobs in Canada and secure our economy. So if you look at the economy today, it's largely heading east. It's heading towards India and China. And so far, Canada does not have a free trade agreement with either India or China. And there are a lot of talks about doing a free trade with uh, India, but it's still some time away. Looking at the fact that uh, the government has done a lot of free trade uh, agreements in Central and South America, why is it taking so long to do free trade agreements with uh, the economies of India and China? Yeah. Well, you know, there has to be a meeting of minds on both sides. And uh, I know on the Canadian side that uh, you know, we're very interested in, in as many you know, trade agreements as possible that will benefit Canada mm -hmm. and, of course, you know, the, other, the other country that we'd be entering into a free trade agreement with. I think that's probably going to happen sooner rather than later. Uh, but at the moment, uh, it's, it's, um, it's not on the immediate agenda. But I know that's being considered and being thought about by policymakers here in Canada, and I suspect by by similar uh, counterparts in India and and China. Okay. I just want to uh, touch upon one sector, and if you look at India today, it's largely an agrarian economy with over seventy percent of uh, the population engaged in agriculture. India is a prime market today for sale of agricultural machinery and advanced agricultural methods from Canada. And if you look at the trade situation with India, it's about $4 billion, which is really, very really tiny. So how important is India to Canada in terms of uh, trade and uh, international agreements? Well, it's very important. And you know, in, in Canada, we won't negotiate a free trade agreement unless it creates jobs in our country and creates value-added jobs. So we've got to be mindful of that fact that uh, you know, we're just not exporting jobs but we are exporting and importing products that will create jobs here in Canada mm -hmm. and jobs that are a value added uh, that you know requires more than uh, you know the um, rather than hand skills but brain skills okay. and so we've got to be mindful of that fact and so yes the value right now of the current trade in agricultural products in particular is quite small yeah. but we have to look beyond sort of agricultural into high technology and into the various other components of the job trade and exchange of goods and exchange of, of, of uh, you know, academics and exchange you know, on the cultural side too. Because free trade you know, really encompasses a whole range of factors, mm -hmm. not just products itself, but also trade and services too. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that we really need to take a very close look at. And like I said, I suspect that at some point in the future, you know, we'll be looking seriously at a free trade agreement with, uh, with India. So just to go back to a little comparison on India and China, China is largely an export-led economy, and India, the demand has always been from within. And if you look at uh, the, the uh, progress that India has made in technology, software exports, it's been a very big industry for India for a long time. A lot of those exports go into uh, US, into the European Union. And we have Silicon Valley next door. Uh, we have RIM in Waterloo. Uh, considering that you want to improve uh, n the knowledge-based economy in uh, Canada, why now are you going to have a Silicon Valley in uh, Toronto, Canada? Well, it's, you know, we're, Canada has been, you know, on the forefront of, of the innovation, uh, on, on the innovation. And Canada has been very aggressive in fostering uh, innovation. Uh, we have, of course, the Mars Discovery District in, in Toronto, which mm -hmm. finances, you know, a lot of uh, innovative uh, uh, discoveries that happen, in particularly the University of Toronto. Uh, it's a very competitive world mm -hmm. when it comes to innovation. You know, the South Carolina Triangle, the Silicon Valley. Canada has been well positioned to uh, to take advantage of that. 
we have a very modest sort of innovation, innovative and innovation economy right now. We need to focus more on that because that's really the economy of the future. Again, what's going to count in the future are the muscles, not brute muscles, but mm -hmm. the muscles that we have between our ears. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to count. And I know this government is very focused on an innovative innovation agenda of creating high-tech jobs, of creating jobs that are value-added, that will, that will speak to the economy and create the economy of the future and create the kinds of Silicon Valleys that we need here in Canada in this country.